next session on the evolution of loyalty is presented by Deloitte. Please welcome a principal at Deloitte Consulting, Rami Morali, in conversation with Skiftex research editor, Jeremy Cressman. Rami, welcome to the Skiff Summit. Hi, very happy to be here. So the title of this panel is about orthodoxies in loyalty programs. So I want to start by asking you, what is an orthodoxy? And how did the pandemic that we went through this past year cause some of the business orthodoxies that we all sort of know to break? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. So think of orthodoxies as just the way the world works or how things get done. And we often think of those things as practices that go unquestioned over time. So think about the idea that fine dining is supposed to happen in a restaurant mm -hmm. or movie premieres are supposed to happen on red carpets. Those are things that we've just taken as norms for, for many, many years. And the pandemic has really turned those things on ahead. So, you know, in the last year, we've seen that we're able to get fine dining in takeout form, and it can be a really, really good alternative to the in-restaurant experience. Or movie premieres are happening in streaming services or restaurants at the same, I mean, on red carpets at the same time. You know, we see those across the industries broadly, and we've seen some really good examples of it in the travel space. Hmm. Yeah, I heard someone use this expression that we went through 10 years of change in 10 months. And I think that holds for a lot of the business changes we've seen. So how did COVID-19 affect orthodoxies related to loyalty, loyalty strategy? You know, we went through this crazy event and I know Loyal Deloitte advises all these different brands on loyalty strategy. Did you see any new trends or needs or best practices come to the fore in what you, you learned? Yeah, so you know, Deloitte has spent a lot of time over the last three to four years really understanding the loyalty landscape, not just in travel, but in the consumer industries broadly. And if you think about orthodoxies in travel, there's some that we know, you know, business travelers are the bread and butter of the travel industry. And if you think about it, that is an orthodoxy that's really been turned on its head in the last year. And we're seeing all the companies of the travel space, airlines, rental cars, hotel companies, think about a world where they think about what loyalty looks like and how do you really think about your loyalty programs and offerings in the context of a world where, you know, when we heard this from Peggy and others earlier today, where business travel volume looks very different and you're really engaging with your consumers in a totally different way. So let's talk a bit more about what's happening with loyalty in the travel space. At a high level, what does what you just described really mean for loyalty programs as they're currently designed in travel? Is there a need for change or what are you seeing changing or evolving now? Yeah, so I think at a macro level, what we have to see is that companies are taking a moment to say, who are our most loyal travelers? In a world where business travel volume looks very different, what is that landscape? How do we segment our customers in a different way than maybe we did before? And what are the things that we're offering to stay connected and stay engaged with them? Uh, because some of our typical methods of engagement aren't there. I think at a macro level, Jeremy, one of the things that we're seeing is companies are starting to think about their loyalty programs, not just as marketing tools, but really as important enterprise level financial assets. We've seen this a lot from the airlines over the last year and saying, how do we think about the valuation of our loyalty program as a real balance sheet activator mm -hmm. and something that can be important in the way that we speak to the market. And all of that is very removed from how the companies are actually using their loyalty program to engage with consumers. Mm -hmm. your, your comments make me think of some of the news we saw this past year about how airlines were um, raising money during the pandemic off of their yeah. loyalty programs as assets. So clearly the, the stakes have been raised here. But, you know, as we think about the nuts and bolts of loyalty, you know, we know it's changing. What would you say are the core features now that a, a successful loyalty program actually needs to have, Ramya? Yeah, I, so we have a set of loyalty beliefs that we think are the five capabilities that any modern loyalty program must have. And it really starts with thinking about how your loyalty program drives important enterprise level business objectives. So that could be driving customer acquisition, retention, share of wallet, the typical things. But what the pandemic has done is it's changed the way that you engage with those consumers. So we think that it's important to have a really robust portfolio of benefits and interactions that you're offering those customers and thinking about the holistic set of interactions and touch points that you have where you deliver them. 
if you think about our travel uh, companies, when we talk to those companies, they've gone from interacting with their consumers dozens to hundreds of times a year to having that be very few interactions. Mm -hmm. so you're really having to draw into the toolkit and say, what are the other levers we have? Is it credit card? Is it partnerships like we've heard earlier in the day? And how can we think about some of these other offerings and relationships so that we can stay connected in an authentic way? And I think that's a really important part of this, Jeremy, which is travel companies have a lot of brand permission with their consumers, but I think consumers are smart enough to know what feels authentic from an engagement standpoint and what doesn't. And really thinking about what are those offerings or brand extensions that you can introduce that connect to the relationship you already have with that brand and with that loyalty program. Hmm. So uh, we heard uh, a session earlier today, Peter from Collinson was talking about how there's this paid opportunity for loyalty now sitting in parallel with what's happening with traditional loyalty programs. And that makes me think about this long history we have with travel loyalty. You know, travel is one of the first industries to come up with loyalty programs. Um, do you think that that experience and that knowledge is a help or is it actually a hindrance to sort of progressing forward with some of these new tactics that you're describing? Well, I think to your earlier point, Jeremy, the 10 years and 10 months paradigm, I think we've seen historically travel companies have been cautious to introduce big programmatic changes. And I think to that comment, we're seeing a lot more agile testing. So is there a world where you can have both an earn and burn model and offer a paid subscription capability? A couple of years ago, we would have said definitively not. Mm -hmm. And I think increasingly you're gonna see over the next couple of years, a lot of travel companies are willing to test some of these smaller formats, ways that you can engage and use your credit card or use other engagements as a way to accelerate your status level or you know different ways that you can engage that's based on how you travel and how you prefer to travel and i think that it creates an exciting opportunity for travel companies across the board to really think about their program in a more agile dynamic way i think that historically a lot of companies have put capabilities into the market and really let them percolate over a long period of time and i think What's going to be exciting about the next couple of years is watching all the travel companies try to test and see what works and see what helps them engage and stay connected to their customers. Hmm. So as we look ahead to the future, what new features or program changes should those of us in the industry be considering to try and differentiate ourselves better? So we are really actively thinking about what are the, what does the next five to 10 years look like and how are companies across the consumer space going to think about evolving their loyalty programs? And I think there are a couple of key dimensions that we're focused on. The first, and this is, should feel really obvious to everybody, is really about consumer data. And as we think about some of the regulations that are influencing the marketplace, some of sensitivity to how consumer data is used, one of the big uncertainties that we're keeping an eye to is how universal or closed in is access to consumer data going to be? And how is that going to impact the way that travel companies and others are able to be targeted and personalized in the way that they engage with customers? The second is really, and this I think is probably more relevant on the hotel side than it is on the airline side, is what is the type of experience that customers are going to be looking for? Are they going to be looking for consistency and some of the scale and opportunity that we see in big, reliable experiences? Or are they going to want local, customized, unique experiences? And again, when you think about it from a stay dimension, that's one of the places where we're already seeing hotel companies start to meet consumers where they are, offer some of those localized, um, customized experiences. And then finally, Jeremy, I think there's this important dimension of how explicit versus implicit is the relationship that a consumer has with a loyalty program? The legacy of loyalty in the travel space are these really wonderful, robust brands. And I think increasingly what we might see is some of the dimensions of loyalty come through the programs, but some of them are more implicit engagements, things that you may not even know are really coming to you individually or you within the context of your relationship with the brand. But I think this notion of implicit versus explicit loyalty will continue to be a, 
uh, not a tension, but a reality that we'll see companies um, play with. Hmm. Rami, I'm so interested by this point about data proliferation versus regulation. Obviously, what Apple is now doing and Google as well with regards to ad tracking is going to have really interesting implications for loyalty programs. So I'm curious to see how that develops. Um, let's actually go to an audience question. We had somebody ask about how does contactless loyalty affect the future of loyalty programs? And I assume by contactless here, we mean just not having a regular activation or engagement with the brand, but um, it could also mean contactless technology. Rami, I'll let you answer that however you, you see fit. Yeah, contactless has been an interesting topic that has been percolating for the last couple of years, but really had a different application in COVID. I think that there are huge segments of the traveler population, and I would say this is certainly true for the business traveler, who wants the frictionlessness, who wants a frictionless experience. And in some way that can be contactless. If you're like a consultant and you're checking in in a hotel every week, there's ease in being able to check in and get your key and board a plane and to be able to do that through the power of the phone. In the pandemic times, contactless offered a huge upside for airlines, hotels, in a way that it minimized unnecessary um, contact and in a way that made consumers feel safe and made sure that hotel employees were also uh, being kept safe. I will say that our research tells us that contactless travel is largely a preference of business travelers. And that when we are traveling for leisure and for pleasure, that the high touch interaction of a really great interaction with a airline, hotel, rental car employee is part of what makes those experiences feel joyful and part of what makes the service culture of these businesses come to life. And so I think it'll be interesting to see how that reconciles with some of the sensitivities consumers have from the pandemic. But I think that to the extent that travel for the foreseeable future is really going to be anchored on leisure travel, I think there's always going to be a practical reality. We want to have that interaction with the front desk agent. We want to be able to be um, interacting with the folks at a hotel or on an airline. And so I'm hopeful that contactless will find its place, but will not proliferate throughout. Hmm. Yeah, I've heard it described as kind of like seamless when you when you don't need help and then a human right away when you do, right? Absolutely. So kind of finding that balance between the two. Yeah. Um, Ramya, we've got about two minutes left. I'd love to have any kind of final thoughts you have about where loyalty is heading or any trends you think we'll see start to pick up as you know recovery begins in earnest here in the US and elsewhere. Yeah, I think I have two, two final thoughts, which is this is a really inc incredible opportunity for travel companies to think about loyalty as a much bigger capability than maybe we did 30, 40 years ago, which is it no longer really is just, as I said, a marketing tool or a customer engagement tool. Loyalty becomes an important lever that can really permeate through an entire organization that is part of your offline and in-person interactions. And it drives value for the customer, but it also drives tremendous enterprise capability. And when we think about it in that way, I think it offers an opportunity for all of the travel companies to think about ways they evolve the offerings and the engagement with customers. Business travel may take a while to reemerge, particularly at the pace that we were used to pre-pandemic, but using the loyalty program as a lever to think about how you engage with your leisure consumers, how you engage locally in your communities, those are such exciting opportunities for all of the companies in the travel space. And I, for one, am really excited to see how um, all of these companies engage with that opportunity and find ways to stay connected with us outside of our flights and stays. I think it's going to be an exciting time over the next couple of years as we and exit the pandemic period, because I, I'm speaking for myself at a minimum, I know that we're all to get back on the road and experience all those joys of travel and you know, loyalty is so core to that experience. So I'm hopeful that as we get out of this period, we'll start to see some of those exciting opportunities come to life. Great. Well, exciting time and hopefully some optimism ahead. Thank you, Romney. We really appreciate having you here today. Thank you for having me.